All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. And today I have a very special guest, uh, Dr. Bridget Jenkins. Uh, I grew up with her as Bridget Turner, uh, but <clears throat> we've known each other since school. Um, we have a, several unique connections outside of school. One of my closest friends, she's real tight with uh, Michael Jordan. She's also very close with my first wife mm -hmm. and uh, they are classmates. And that little one right there, I stay on her. She always out doing something. Another night, I look up and they out and I look up all y'all in the picture. I say, there they go. But uh, yeah. one thing that I, I can say, man, that class 87, something, something y'all something else, man. But um, the one thing I can say, yes, <laughs> one thing I can say about Bridget is she's been consistent in her character. She's been consistent um in how she views things she's always been a lady and you know um and i mean and it comes from the home and i think that's one of the things that i want to talk about but we're going to talk about this whole <laughs> hobosexual culture and the reason i asked her to come on is she addressed it um several days ago before I addressed it on the black voice, she had addressed it on Facebook. And so I, I've heard the term a long time ago and I thought, and initially to me, it was just a term tossed out for dudes that do that type of stuff. But what got my attention here is it's actually become a thing that dudes have the audacity to get on social media and actually give tutorials on how to be a homosexual. In other words, something that you should be immensely ashamed of, you're taking pride in. And so, uh, Bridget, so tell me, let, uh, correction, Dr. Bridget, I want to be, I want to be correct and professional in that, uh, despite our personal relationships. Um, tell me what you saw or heard and then just sort of segue into the response you had, primarily for women, and then we'll talk about this thing. Okay. So um, good morning, everyone. And thank you, Dr. Rick, for having me on. And yes, we do go way back. And you too, sir, have been very consistent in uh, giving good information, uh, information and tools that help our people live better lives. And uh, I like to appreciate you for that. And so what happened was I was on TikTok, <clears throat> no, Instagram, and um, I came across a video of a young gentleman. He was telling me and giving instruction on how to be a successful homosexual. I was floored. I was actually flabbergasted that you are out here giving instruction on how to take advantage of women. Um, and when I said in my, I did a live, I came on because I just wanted to talk to the ladies and give them some, you know, some warning to that, that this is actually going on. And I stated in my video that I've seen this happen, but I also wanted to, you know, just encourage women because um, in this day and age, you know, Dr. Rick, a lot of women, they um, feel like uh, being married or being in a relationship is the end of all ends. They just, they got to do it. And so sometimes at the, um, by all means necessary. And so they become victim to this kind of uh, behavior. And so what the gentleman was just saying was telling them how to do this, how to meet somebody, um, first go to their house, you know, stake out the joint, <laughs> go to their house and, um, you know, eat their food, um, have um, the best sex ever with them and go to sleep and wake up and make sure. And he, he was like giving clear instructions. Make sure you do it on a night that she has to go to work. And that morning when she wakes up and go to work and she leave you there and just be there when she get back and you in. And Dr. Rick, you know, I was just, my heart was hurt 
to hear this. Clear instruction. And of course, you know, I'm a comment reader. <laughs> I'm right. in the comments. And some of the guys will say, yeah, I've been doing that. Doing it. Wow. I've been in, I've been in place for five years, one gentleman said. I've been in place for five years. So I want to be very clear on this. Um, number one is it's not something I condone in any way. But so because there's something else I heard you saying that and I, I want that to come out when these guys do this and she's getting up going to work. What are they doing? They're at home. They're at her house. So the reason that they have to be homosexuals is because they're not even out there trying to work and get their own. Yes. Okay. And a lot of times um, they don't have a place to stay. Right. They need a place to stay. They are um, staying with family or other homeboys. They're trying to find a place to stay. So the whole purpose of doing this, and you know, you, you know, we're educated. And the first thing I do is go try to find out what's the definition? What does this mean? And it says somebody who um, enters into a relationship because they need a place to stay or to prevent or end homelessness. Right. Wow. And it, it totally baffles me for a couple of reasons. First of all, I have to say that, again, simply the way that you address or refer to this person speaks to who you are because you have several times referred to him as a gentleman. I see him as anything but. Uh, and I was very, very clear in my addressing of this. This isn't an attack on black men who are struggling. This is an attack on black men who are struggling and think that black women are their come up. Yes. Uh, and so that's the difference because I guarantee you the hardest person to get on in this country is a black man. We are yeah. systematically targeted to be unemployed, underemployed, underpaid while being completely commodified. And what I mean by commodification is the only focus that has been laid on the chest of or the backs of black men is can you pay all the bills? Right. That, that's the that conversation has had more on social media than anything. How are you doing 50 50 or is he paying all the bills? Or is he right. going, and the whole thing is unless a black woman is willing to live the average on, on a median, the, the woman is living to live in a budget of $44,000 or less. Cause that's what the median income for black men is. Now, if you live in a budget of 44 or less, it's a bunch of my dad that can pay all the bills. Right. But, the idea is that there's this abundance of black men making six figures. And the truth of the matter is only 6% of us do it. And what I can tell you is six figures don't stretch like it, like it used to. Right. Uh, and so even that says we don't really have understanding, but I get it. And I have no problem with saying black men are supposed to be providers. We're, but number one is we're supposed to be protectors before we're providers. We are literally, before we ever developed the capacity to earn money, we developed the physical capacity to be a protector. We become bigger and stronger than you guys starting at about 11, 12 years 11, old. Absolutely. And, and that's for us to protect you. But protection isn't just physical. It, 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 the biggest part when you commodify us is you turn us into um, a point where our only emphasis is money. And that creates a problem. But what happens is you lose the sight of our ability to cover, to lead, to protect, and to be all the things that provide the security for a woman to feel safe so she can be everything she's supposed to be. And yes, a part of that is material provision. But when you make that the only thing, then you still get the flip side of the hobosexual is the cat with the bag. Yeah. And he uses his money to, again, manipulate women. And so I think we need a a, a, a true thing. Mm -hmm. but my issue with it is I believe it goes back to something that I've been immensely um, passionate about for years. Anybody who has followed um, knows that I'm real big on family. Um, and I think that the disintegration of the black family has a major 
uh, in, 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 uh, influence on how we're thinking and how we're moving as men, uh, the, yes. the brokenness of our women, um, and this gender war that's going on now between black men and black women, where we don't see the value in one another. One another, that's true. And when we lose that, we lose our power. I say this all the time. We were designed to be different so that we could merge and come together and create something powerful. God designed us, if we look at scripture says, to become one. And what is that? The sinking of my predominantly masculine energy and the your predominantly fem feminine energy to come together to create synergy, the sinking of our energies to do something that we could not do as individuals. Absolutely. And part of that is the rearing of children that will get the balance of that energy and get the wholeness necessary in an environment where we teach them the values they need. And then they see it lived in us. They see what man, a man does in the home. They see what a woman does in the home. Then we teach them the value. Finance and everything comes out of that. When you break that up, you got a bunch of people defining themselves. And that's where we are in manhood. And these are the conversations we have all the time is, what does a man, who is a man? What is a man? Mm -hmm. And the problem is, and then I'm going to turn it back over to you. The problem I see in defining manhood is we pretty much left it up to every man. So men tend to define manhood based on their strengths. The guy with the paper defines manhood on what he drives, where he works, what he's got. I got this crib. I got all this going on. I'm a man. Uh, the guy that's got the body and the sex six pack, everything is about his virility. Right. Uh, you know, the guy who puts it down in the bedroom like no other. He, his whole thing is hung on that. That's where he's going to try to get you at. Uh, the guy with the nice uh, conversation and the real caring person is going to say it's all about the heart. The truth of the matter is I need you to merge all that stuff. All of it. And, yes. and, and, and come together. And, and I'll tell you uh, at age 56 that it's an ongoing struggle. You don't perfect it. You don't master it. You just become better and you want to be better. And uh, but I, what I look at is a young, a bunch of young cats who don't have any indication because the vast, uh, vast majority of them grew up without strong male influences. And now we have a break in male connectivity to where the old heads don't call the young heads out on BS. Yes. So, but your message to the sisters was very valuable. So I want you to sort of reiterate that, um, in, in whatever way you want to, um, and then we, we can move forward. But I think that it, it's going to be better coming from you than me. Uh, I'm constantly doing, but I want to hear, I want them to hear what you had to say. Okay. So one thing I was saying in uh, my, my video was that um, ladies have to uh, love themselves, love themselves enough not to be vulnerable to this tactic. Um, I, I Somebody said in my inbox, like, what if the dude just need help? Say you need help. Don't try to come and play game on on the sister because you need a place to stay, or or um, you don't you are between jobs or whatever. Just say you need help. Stop playing games, and and that's the big issue. So for the ladies, I was like, you know, be careful who you bring into your home, because um, that's what he says. When you meet her, get to that house, get into her home. That's how that's that's the number one thing that you have to do to become a successful homosexual is to get into a home. So my message was, lady, stop letting me and just come to your house. And in my video, I talked about myself because um, I have I, I have my own home. I have since I was in my 20s, had my own home, owned it. And. I don't let me and just come to my house. I don't entertain me in my home. Not because I don't, I think, I think I'm too good to somebody here. It's because I know how valuable I am. I know who I am. I know who's I am. I am. So this is my safe place, my place of peace. And I always have thought about, you know, what if you bring in this person to your home and the relationship doesn't work and now they have access to you? I, I'm not giving you access to me. So we have to be mindful who we bring into our home. The the next other thing that I told ladies is um, 
stop having sex with everybody. He said, go, he said, get in the house and give her the best sex she ever had. He said, dog it down, beat it up. The best sex. So now I feel like he has um, brought you to the place where he, that you think sex is valuable and powerful. It, it defines who you are. It, it, now for me, I said in the video, so you're not getting no sex. I'm saving this and I am going to continue to save myself for my husband. And if I don't get no husband, I'm going to take this to the grave. Not because I believe that I'm better than anybody else or I don't even have sexual desires because that's not true. I just know who I am and I know how powerful sex is. And in this video, he was just saying, if you just do it, give her the best sex she ever had, you in. I think that's a, a low point to be that you can define a whole relationship on how good the sex was because our relationships encompass way more than sex. Right. And when sex is taken out of context within the relationship, uh, it can actually be a detriment. Good yes. sex. If yes. it's taken out or bad sex, if it's taken out of context in the relationship, you lose sight of what's important. But the more and more you put value on sex, the less you are able to filter out what else is coming. It's something you, interesting you said that I want to get to and I want to get back to this, this whole sex thing. But you said someone asked you, well, what if they just need help? And you said, say you need help. That level of maturity isn't seen in today because yeah. that level of maturity recognizes that a person that can be a good person and capable of being a provider may be in a space Absolutely. where they're not on their game right now. Now, the difference is, and this is what I want to tell you, ladies, and guys pay attention, but I'm going to tell you, ladies, this. This is how you recognize the difference between a dude that's going to squat on your land <laughs> And a dude that's going to come plant in it. Yes. Is, even if he's down, he's on his grind. He's he's probably, you're probably going to have to drag it out of him that he even needs your help. But he's look, I'll put it like this. He'll show you with his actions where he's said it. Absolutely. And then if you ask him, well, where are you trying to go? He will in great detail explain it to you. And then you'll be able to look at what he's doing and say, yeah, he's trying to get there. Then you make up in your mind because you don't owe it to him now. Absolutely. But you make up in your mind. Wait a minute. I could probably he going where I'm going. You know, I can I can, I can plug into this. And the thing is, you will know very quickly what he plans to do because he will reciprocate your energy. He will reciprocate your action. He may not have money, but he has something he's going to show you outside of sex. And he's going to get there. And let me tell you about the whole sex thing. Let me tell you about the need to heal. One of the mistakes that I, I used to make, uh, I would come out of, a, I'm a serial monogamous. Anybody knows me knows that. It's not something that I'm proud of because my goal is always to be married. And I just haven't gotten that done right yet. And I'm, I'm honest about it. But mm -hmm. my thing is this, what I used to do is come out of that monogamous relationship when it didn't work and go ham mm -hmm. because I didn't want to be alone. Right. So I had to have enough women in my portfolio that if one was busy, I was, I was never going to be in a situation where I wanted female company and couldn't have it. I never gave myself time to heal. I never gave myself time to recover, release. Mm -hmm to come back. Um, and the thing is, you also know Marion, my my my, uh, mm -hmm. my recent ex-wife. And mm -hmm. we've been broken up now almost two years. Not one woman has come over my house. I have not been over one woman's house. I have not even thought about sex. And the reason being is, what am I taking with me yes. that may be a problem? And also, what do I want to bring at the table? I don't want to bring my hurt with me. And this isn't about right. placing blame nowhere. This is about sitting mm -hmm. up saying what's in front of me. And if I'm still carrying what's behind me in any shape or form, I can't yes. get in there. So this idea that sex is the fix. Right. 
All you're doing is, and this is scientifically proven, and you being in the medical field, you understand this mm -hmm. as well. This is scientifically proven that when you have sex with a person, you're exchanging DNA. It literally yeah. impacts your genetic interference. It doesn't change your DNA sequence, but it does impact your DNA, uh, your your uh, genes' ability to decipher, read your DNA, and how it performs. You are leaving a part of yourself with somebody and taking a part of them with you. And what you got to understand is in that genetic makeup is also illness, mm -hmm. your, the attack on your immune system, mm -hmm. uh, the attack on your emotional, how your brain creates uh, chemical reactions that produce neuro, uh, 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 neurotransmitters mm -hmm. and endorphins like serotonin, dopamine, yeah. or the release of cortisol and adrenaline, which is a stress response. <clears throat> You wonder why you feel a certain way. You don't got with somebody that passed their stress, their trauma on the YouTube oh, sex. Absolutely. And so my whole thing is we have to get to a point to where we, va the thing you say is love yourself. The one thing that I determined is if I'm ever going to be, and I do in, in a marriage again, I've got to be at a place where I love myself so much that it sets the standard and Absolutely. it also conditions me on what i want because if i'm really truly loving myself i'm in a better position to love but i'm also setting the standard of what i yes. will tolerate what i won't tolerate and just living on that and the thing is for my sisters let me tell you something if it's all about sex even if it's all about the bag you have set yourself between the bag and sex you have set yourself up in the places where we play. Right. And that's the place we got the advantage. And then you've got to sit up and say, okay, what am I really getting? Sex and money. And how, you know how many divorces have ended because they started because of sex and money? Absolutely. And so what does he have in his heart? What is his heart towards you? How does he talk to you? And if the first thing he leads with is money and sex... Keep walking. Yeah. But go ahead. And, I mean, because the thing that I heard that was really, truly uh, emphatic and impacting in what I heard you say when I listened to it was the love yourself part and the whole idea of not letting a man come to your house. Yes. And the value in that and i i think that to me my where i where i live is my place of peace Absolutely. it's my place of sanctity yeah. it's my place of purity i control the energy in here there's Absolutely. no negative energy there's no stress there's no fear there's no anxiety i make sure that i stay prayed up i meditate I control my own thoughts in my home. My home is set up for me to see nothing but positivity, prosperity, blessings and love and God. And I don't Absolutely. control what you bring into my house if I just let anybody in. So I need to know your energy. My homeboys don't come to my house. Absolutely. And and it it is it has nothing to do again like like you know, I'm better than you my house. It's just this has got there has to be a place that you can retreat to when the world gets crazy. And if your home is crazy, where are you going to go? And so, Absolutely. ladies, the whole thing is this. One of the things, and that's why I don't like to see my sister say they don't need a man, because one of the first things you need him for is to protect you. But he can't protect you if he's trying Absolutely. to prey on you. So then until you can find somebody who is truly a protector, and I mean that ever since, he's going to stand between you and anybody that's coming to you to bring you negative energy, negative uh, impact to do anything. He's going to be that barrier. If he isn't that to you, then you don't need to trust him in your space of sanctity, period. I agree. So and, go ahead. One of the things that I was saying is, um, ladies, you got to love yourself enough to protect yourself, <clears throat> protect your home. You can't let everybody and any everybody come to your home. Um, 
and I'm 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 very strong on that because this is my safe place, like you said, my place of peace. When somebody come to my house, they sit on the couch and they relax, they sleep in a minute. Because it's so peaceful here. And I've already always created that atmosphere. I don't have no fighting and yelling in here. I don't want it. I love to have a home, uh, a sanctuary to me. And we should be creating that now, even as single women. So when you do get married, you'll know how to create that same environment um, in your home with your husband and your children. Um, you have to have a safe place and you cannot just have any and everybody running through your house. And I think that's so important. And one of the other things that I said was um, I, 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 in the video, um, the guy was saying that um, make sure you go a night that she got to go to work. And when she get up in the morning, just stay asleep and just be there when she come back. If she leave you there, you're in. My thing is, if you're spending the night, why are you not getting up going to work the next morning as well? I've, I've it happened and men are not, these they're not even working. They're not even, like you said, they don't even have the mindset to go out here and change their situation. They're just looking for someone to live off of. So we have to be very, very careful. Um, I'm and, and I said, I'm not leaving no man at my house when I get up and go to work. If I'm getting up going to work, we both getting up going to work. We both paying bills. We both going to pay these bills. That's just how that is. And I, the the whole um, concept of this is to take get yourself in a position with a woman and take advantage of her because you don't have your stuff together. And that hurt me to my heart to see this video and to see um, even some of the comments of guys saying, I've been doing it. I've been in place for five years. I, you know, I, I, yeah, my, my lady pay off. Uh, and you can, like you said earlier, you can see signs that th these guys, if you date them long enough, you can see where they going. You can see if they, um, I, I, I'm careful when I, if they broke and I'm not talking about broke in their finances, in their pockets. I'm, 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 I'm not talking about that. There's different types of broke. If they broke in their pockets or if they broke in their mind, mm. you can tell. If somebody is going somewhere, you can see if they broke, we can fix broke in the pocket and easy, get a job, uh, get some, get some um, education under your belt, get some training, some career training or something. We can fix broke in your pocket, but you can't fix broke in your mind. No, you, they got to fix that. Right. That's got to be something that they're working on. Yes. And I think that the one thing that we need to be clear in defining here is anybody that thinks the way uh, to come up as a man is to live off of a woman uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, is broke. Absolutely, broke. they're actually broken. And 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 here here's mm -hmm. something that that Frederick Douglass said. He says it's easier to build strong children than it is to fix broken men. And as a person who does this. Literally, that's why I created Black Men Lead, because if we can prepare them and socialize them when they're four, five, six, up until the age of 13, preparing them for what manhood looks like, they will literally aspire to be it. Back in the day, that's what it was. When you grew up, when I grew up, it was a lot more men. Yes. And when we grew up, we looked at, mm -hmm. I didn't have my biological father, but I had my great grandfather. You know, born in 1909, he grew up, he was a son of a sharecropper. He worked in the field at seven years old. So his mindset is like nobody in this house is in the bed at seven. Absolutely. I don't care if it's the summertime, you're going to get up, you're going to do your stuff. We're going to eat breakfast together. We're going to pray together. You're going to go out and do your chores. Now, if you still tired when you finish and you ain't got nothing to do, you can come back later and take a nap. But everybody up before seven. And right mm -hmm. now, if I tell you I slept in, it means I stayed in the bed to seven. Mm-hmm. I cannot be in the bed past seven. It's just the way I'm built. Right. Um, and I've had financial strain. I've I've gone to the top. I've been in places I would never imagine. Then I've had times where I had to rebuild. But it was always a vision. It was never a time I'm laying in the bed. It's never a time I'm sitting around with my legs kicked up. It's never a time that I'm sitting. And then it's times where I'm, I'm not bad yeah. off, but I'm nowhere where I want to be. And I'm still acting like 
I'm driving and I'm striving. Why? Because I got something mm-hmm. in my mind of where I'm supposed to be. And if I could be where past where most people are, but if I'm not where I'm supposed to be, I'm still not good with it. My boy, like, hey, let's go do this now, man. I gotta grind, man. You, no, I gotta get. I got. That's something I'm trying to get to, and that's the mentality that we had in the house. So, if a man with a second grade education can retire with his house paid for, start a business after retirement, be married to a woman who has her own beauty salon that got an eleventh grade education, I can't just sit around and say. Any excuses now? Does it mean that things don't happen? Oh, things happen, especially if you really truly trying to build something. You're gonna take risks that's gonna put you back somewhere. That's that that's thing. not the thing. My thing is, I, I, I can look at a dude Absolutely. within. I get guys, young black brothers, come to me all the time about mentorship, and so I have a meeting with him, and I can sit down. And before the meeting is over, the conversation is going to tell me if you're where you are because you just need guidance or are you where you are because you really not going to put in the work. And we live in an entitled society and a microwave society that merged. I think I should have it just because I'm supposed to have it. And then it's supposed to happen right now. And when it don't happen, then you just fall back, feel sorry for yourself and you want somebody to pick you up. Right. And the truth is, there's nothing wrong with somebody picking you up, but you should be trying to get yourself up when they get there. Absolutely. And so uh, something that Ronald, Ronald Zion, I hope he's still on, but if not, he, he can come back. But he has Dr. Rick and Dr. Bridget uh, is codependency of the woman attracted to this kind of behavior. And in some instances it is yeah. that, uh, the codependency uh the needing the need to be needed and yes. to help somebody. Uh, that codependency can be a part of it. But a lot of times what I've seen in my own and, and, and Dr. Bridget, you can talk on this. Uh, a lot of times what I've seen in my line of work is there are sometimes codependency, but most of the time it's a an infar, it's an inferiority complex. It's a lack of self-esteem mm-hmm. and self-awareness. Mm-hmm. So it's not so much codependency. It's I don't believe I deserve anything better. Absolutely. And. Um, I spoke to that in my video. And what I said is um, the self-esteem. I said, ladies, you got to love yourself enough that you won't put yourself in a place to be taken advantage of. And what 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 encompasses that is childhood trauma. Um, It could even be trauma as an adult. Stuff that has not been healed or dealt with and. Some women are so desperate to have a relationship with a man because daddy wasn't there. Daddy abandoned them. And they feel like, I got to have a man. I got to have a man. So they they take on these projects and they get stuck. And, And 10, 12, 13, 14, 15 years down the line, you're still doing the same thing. You're still taking care of this man because that's how you started it. He came in. You cooked him a meal. He gave you the best sex you ever had and he stayed there and he been there ever since. And you're still not living in the capacity that you should be living in because of what you settled for. And again, you said this and uh, somebody came in my inbox and said, well, all men are not like that. I never said that all men were like that. But I said to be leery that there are men. Look at this man giving instructions. And last look, it was it was over. I think over 500,000 views um, the last time I looked and the comments were crazy. And so that, that this is happening every day, but ladies, I, and I'm, I'm clear on my instructions, get healed, get some help, get whole. And there are men out here that will love you and you don't have to be a, a construction worker. You don't have to rebuild them. In fact, I'm leery of men that I do have to build because that's my work. They need to do the inner work and maybe they need my support and that's okay. But to be just having someone live on you or move in on you because you're in a vulnerable place and, and so desperate to have a relationship or a man is so hurtful to see. I'm waiting on you. 
Okay. Hear me now? Yeah, I can't. For some reason it went mute. Uh, but in, 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 I agree with you 100%. In my um, research and work, uh, one of the things, when I created the Visionetics concept, which is a big thing for my, my flagship company, the Visionetics concept, it was based on the self-image, the self-concept. And what we find is a person's life, their aspirations, how they move, what they expect out of life, what they deal with and accept from other people is directly linked to their self-image. Their yes. self-image is going to be the catalyst for their self-esteem, their self-confidence and how they move. When yes. there is a yes. deficit in the self-image that says, this is all that I am, whether it's mm -hmm. in a deficit of how you see yourself uh, as far as beauty is concerned, as far as intellect is concerned, as far as attractiveness is concerned, mm -hmm. you, 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 you diminish your own value and you convince yourself that I'm just lucky to have B A, B, C. Yes. That there's no way possible I can deserve it. Why? Because I don't look like her. I don't mm -hmm. have this like she has. And you start to lose who you are. That's, again, why it's so important to really visit this conversation about the uh, restoration of the black family. Because what we talk about when we talk about absentee fathers, we always talk about boys. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he it's because he, what we don't realize is the actual identity and value of a girl is given to her by her father, mm -hmm. not her mom. Her father tells her she's beautiful. Her mm -hmm. father tells us she's protected. Her father tells you her worth. And, and by how he engages her, he's yes. laying the foundation of what she's going to expect from a man. If he's not there, she don't know. And then if mom is having bad situations with men, yes. then she starts to develop an idea of this is what happens. Yes. So then what we've got to talk about again is this healing thing. And yes. you talk about trauma. We need to talk about adverse childhood experiences because what mm -hmm. we know is one of the most prevalent adverse childhood experiences is the separation from the mom and dad. When, when that breakup happens, uh, there, there's, there's a traumatic event that takes place. And we've got to realize that uh, the old idea that children are resilient, they'll get over it, they'll adapt. Absolutely. But what we know now is if you've got four of those aces, uh, physical abuse, emotional abuse, uh, absentee parent, uh, parent with parent or loved one with some sort of mental disorder, mm -hmm. uh, and, and the list goes on. Mm -hmm. If you got four of those, that kid is 12 times more likely to attempt suicide, four times more likely mm -hmm. uh, to develop certain forms of cancer. Two and a half mm -hmm. times more likely to develop ischemic heart disease, the number one killer mm -hmm. in America. Mm -hmm. And you go down the mm -hmm. line. All these outcomes comes from the fact that they got broken early. And so we've got a responsibility to build this because what yes. happens mm -hmm. is broken children become broken adults. Absolutely. And we're demanding something because I guarantee you, someone who feels it's okay to go around and talk about taking advantage of women is broken. And what it tells me is when you've got 500,000 views and a large number of the comments in the, in the section is literally co-signing it, it's That's a it. bunch of broken brothers out there that we are exposing our daughters to. And the question is, are our daughters whole and healed enough to be able to withstand that? The question is, it wouldn't be a big thing if they were. These guys are winning because our daughters aren't prepared and the guys are trying because we haven't fixed, helped them fix themselves. And so we have so much at play. And the thing is, it's easy for us to sit up, you know, 60s and 70s babies and reflect back on when there were more two parent households, because mm -hmm. we, we came in on the end of that before the family just started to crumble. And we had our parents in the house, a large number of them. And we also had community. So even when there was a family that maybe didn't have somebody that the other the other community members came in and made sure that house was OK. Absolutely. And, and now you can live in a community and not know your next door neighbor mm -hmm. because that's how uh, scattered and separated and splintered we've become in our mm -hmm. individualism. And now you can't say something to anybody else's child or here they come down the street ready to fight. Whereas in I can remember being a kid 
and by by far my parents were the strictest and everybody i could just look at all the other kids and they, and they getting away with all kind of stuff but i can remember being four blocks over at a friend's house playing and their mom let them do whatever they want to do but she'll come out on that porch and catch me doing something and she'll say rick do you know Miss Wallace don't know you around here? Do you want me to go around there and tell her you're over here doing this? Nah, her kids can do it. Mm -hmm. But she know my parents enough to know they don't allow me to do it. And she's mm -hmm. not going to allow me to do it in her presence. Right. That, that That's over with now. You know, if you ain't there, no telling what your kid's doing. And so the question is, what do we do about it? But for the sisters who are already adults who are in this mm -hmm. world, and I, I got a message for the brothers too, but for the sisters who are in this world, uh, you're an adult now. There's, you know, you can't reverse and go back to childhood. So mm -hmm. you're dealing with something. Yeah. If you can get help. Absolutely. If you can't afford professional help, find a center or something like that. If not, find a strong black female who has the ability to pour into you Absolutely. and let you, and what 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 a real true strong sister would do and i'm not talking about the quote these uh the quintessential strong black woman thing and doc what what doc, what i what i normally share with them on that is i i tell them all the time i literally cringe every time i hear strong black woman and they get me upset too. with me, me too. you don't like strong black i say <laughs> no most black women are strong in some sense when I hear strong black woman, the reason I cringe is it's normally applied to some black woman who's doing something she shouldn't have to do. Absolutely. And, and then she's being praised so much for it. She literally identifies with it and, a stri and strives toward it. You know, I did this on my own. You weren't supposed to. I did this and I've got this. You weren't supposed to. And the thing is, yes, you're doing it, but at what cost? And so that's it. But when I say strong, I mean a woman who knows who she is. Absolutely. Now, a real true strong black woman can be able to hold her own, but know how to sink into the covering of a man. And a real strong black man isn't intimidated by the strength of her and still knows how to cover her. And that's the thing we should be striving towards is the development of a mindset and a state that we can embrace one another and love on one another and care about one another. And it's hard for me to sit here and think that there is a growing number of men whose idea of living in this world is riding the back of a woman. Again, I don't believe in the other side of it either that just because you're cute in a woman you just go get to sit in under a man because he got paper and he got to right. lavish you and you got to do nothing i right. don't believe in that i believe that that's an equal gift now in some instances what you're giving may not be income he might say hey i i, I got you on that side but then his home has to be peaceful when he comes home from war right. he's got to feel like he's the man meaning that there's a part of you that pour in and to the sisters once again and then, uh, Dr. Bridget, you can you can you can close this thing out for us, sisters. I'm going to explain something to you about men, real men who know the, who they are. They're going to already have drive. Mm -hmm. They're going to have a vision. Um, this vision is an imagery of the blueprint of their destiny, and they're locked into it. Your job isn't to move them off of that and do get them to do what you think they should do. Your job is to say, can I plug into that? And can I be a plus in that? But I'm going to tell you something. The brain, the, 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 the female brain and the male brain work different. The female brain tends to operate from left to right. You guys have better discernment than we do. You guys respond emotionally. Uh, you feel things better than we do. We run from front to back we literally get our reassurance and our affirmation, internal affirmation for what we accomplish, what we are able to do to make things better. That's why when you come tell your man what happened at work today, you can't, it ain't the same response as when you tell your girl, you tell your girl, oh girl, blah, blah, blah. Y'all laughing off, talking off. You just want to get it off your check. You tell your man, he finna fix it. 
He go, you need to go back and tell them this. You need to go. Do I need to come up there? And, and you didn't even want them, but that's how we are. We fix things. Absolutely. But the thing that I see, one of the biggest problems I see is here's something that, that happens in that. There's nothing that affirms a man more than a woman. And there are two ways, the two, the two most powerful ways that you do that. The first way is with your words. When you tell a man, I love the way you do that, watch what he does in there. He's going to try to do it better the next time. And he'll, you tell him you love what he doing. he will go through a wall to do it because that's what he wants to hear from a woman he loves. Now, if he don't love you, he don't need to be there. But if he cares about you and he say, you say, I love, he going to do the best he can to be and do that. Number two, the most powerful, powerful way you affirm him is when you give yourself to him. The surrendering of yourself yes. physically to him says he's the man. The problem is now the surrender is too easy. He's not having to work for it. He's not having to earn it. And what happens is he loses it. And you're wondering why he's out there running around chasing other tail while you're giving him the goodies. Is because you didn't make him connect to you first before you gave it to him. So he gets the affirmation that he actually needs through you surrendering to him. But because there's nothing that'll make him stay, he goes and chases it again because he needs that affirmation. But if you make him commit to you spiritually, emotionally, before physically, he's got something invested. And we as men think calculative. We don't think emotional. We chase our investments. That's why you're getting fewer and fewer black men who won't get married because we done did the math now. So now we need to feel safe because we now know that 80% of divorces are filed for by women and that they normally leave with more than what they came with. So now we're starting to say, no, I'm not willing to give it up. It ain't worth the risk because 50% of these things end in divorce. And 80% is y'all jacking us and leaving. Now, I'm not saying that a bunch of brothers ain't doing stuff. And this is not just black people. But I'm not saying that people don't do. This isn't about who was right or who was wrong. This is just simple math for us. So if you want us to really invest, we need to feel safe too. We need to know what, what that we're going to anchor in you and that we're going to get through the things we need to get through. But bottom line, stop giving away the cookie because he got a six pack. Right. Or uh, stop giving away the cookie because you know you you just feel like he the way he way he hugs you just makes you feel oh, I gotta let me tell you something <laughs> let me tell you something <laughs> sex don't pay the bills mm -mm. sex is never going to satisfy that deep yearning that many of you have because daddy wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Sex is out of place, one of the most devastating things you can experience because it will rob you of the little that you have. Mm -hmm. And it'll have you questioning your very value. Sex has to be in context. Somebody has a seal of enough value in you to invest in you, to hold you. And as a man, I'm saying that. You know, I mean, uh, even at 56 years old, in the places that I move is normally in places like the Cigar Lounge, and I'll go a couple other places to hang with the guys or whatever. And there, the, you women and just took over our darn Cigar Lounge. By the way, <laughs> they used to be our spot. Now you roll up in there, y'all got the whole darn bar tied up. But I digress. But what I tell you, it is not unheard of within in one day to have two or three chicks and they're not just saying hey what's your number hey let me come home with you hey you want to come over to my place hey so the opportunities are always there all you got to do is have something going for you and mm -hmm. and, 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 and 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 move in a certain way and it's gonna be, my thing is i ain't trying to do that my heart is valuable to me and i don't want anything shallow I, that's the one thing about aging doc you get a certain age you start to realize mm -hmm. oh, I, I don't have time for that one no i'm not doing that and so uh no nah, no nah, uh, i don't have that to, i'm not gonna go through that three months of that now nah, i'm good 
So then you start to say, well, if it's that value, it's always been that valuable, but you to make you think I got plenty of time. So you start taking chances. You shouldn't take with your heart, with your spirit, with your emotion, with your body, with your body and you look <laughs> up again and you go, wow, now I got this over here. I got this over here. This has happened. That. And then you start to buy into society's definition of your value. Well, nobody's going to want me because I got kids. No. My last wife had six kids when I met her. I, I loved her and I married her and I took those kids. It, the right guy will love you. Absolutely. But you've got to believe in yourself and you got to love yourself mm -hmm. enough to say that it's there. And men, stop letting other men tell you you're a simp for loving a woman, for giving to her, to caring for her. Don't be no fool because there's some women out there with mad game. That I have you looking up and you wondering where everything at and what's going on. They they done got you. But what I'm saying is we've got to get to a place where it's okay to love. And that love, like Dot said, is starting with self. When you start to love yourself, here's the thing. You don't just care about yourself. You also care about how you treat other people. Absolutely. So, Doc, any last uh, words of encouragement or... Uh, inspiration or direction? Yeah, I, I just want to make sure that I'm clear in, in my video, I talked about how to avoid this. Mm -hmm. And I, one thing I said, stop letting uh, men come to your house. Stop having sex with anybody. Um, and like I said, I'm, I I know I'm waiting and I know that's taboo. Um, a lot of people are like, I'm not waiting. I'm, I'm waiting I'm, too, Doc. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm not getting, I'm, I'm getting me some. Okay, <laughs> but be careful how soon and who you give yourself to. Take some time to get to know the person for real because once you do have sex, you start to be blind to other things. Somebody say, you didn't see that red flag? No, because I was blinded by that good sex that that man in that video said. He was going to dog it down. You were blinded by it, so you missed all the other uh, red flags or things that you needed to be mindful of. And But most important, Learn how to protect your place where you live. Um, that should be your place of peace, your sanctuary. Don't just have anybody running in and out. Um, but most importantly, get some healing. Because like I said, I, I know people that this has happened to. And I can, I can point directly to childhood trauma, uh, absentee father, abandonment issues. And they just want to have somebody there. And they won't, and they just take anything. Know who you are. Know your own self-worth and value before you just go and just be a victim of this person um, that's trying to use you, like Dr. Rick said earlier, as a come up. They ain't got nothing. They, they, they not willing to work for it. They want to mooch off of you because they see what you have. And I think that's important. And counseling is, is a wonderful thing. I know we're talking about it a lot now and we didn't before. And, and like Dr. Rick said, if you cannot afford it, get, get somebody. I'm going to even say this. There are some books out here that I use to help me get healed that I read and read and continue to read um, now when I need that uplifted to help me get past a certain point in my, uh, in my journey. You can also do that. Reach out to a strong person. I'm always available. And um, I'm very careful in the advice I give. I am a certified counselor. I can help. I can direct. I can give referral. But we got to make sure that we're getting healed, getting a good place of healing, getting a good place of self-love, self-value, and knowing who you are and who you are so that you won't be taken advantage of uh, by men that, that are doing this thing. So they cannot be homeless, so that they can have a hot meal every day, have a place to stay, and have sex on demand. Amen. Uh, and I think that's it. And guys, we've got to do a better job of holding one another accountable. Uh, we've got to be more engaged and caring about the next generation and what they got going on, uh, because they own one. And I think that falls on us. Uh, we need to own that. We need to own it and admit we are off. We, we failed. Um, and it's OK to say you failed. I know I have failed multiple times in my life and I'll fail again because I'll keep trying. 
Uh, but we've got to do a better job of engaging this. And, you know, and I've recently not only taken on the responsibility of engaging young men, but I've recently reconnected with my older sons uh, in a more intimate way uh, because being grown, uh, as they call it, doesn't qualify you to navigate these labyrinthine corridors of life because I'm 56 and I've had some pretty powerful people in my life and I still have questions. And the last thing you need to have out there is questions and nobody to seek answers to. It. So we've got to be available and we've got to be willing to be available and understand that the person that's going to approach us isn't going to behave like us, isn't going to talk like us, isn't going to move like us. We got to understand they're not us, but they need us. And we got to be there because here's the, and I'm saying this and I'm done. Here's the, here's the catch and here's the thing. When we don't do that, these young men are, are the ones we are releasing our daughters to. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why our sons are killing our daughters when they can't keep them in a relationship that they don't want to be in anymore. We fail the sons. There's a reason why there are people running around looking for ways to exploit our sons, exploiting our daughters. We failed our sons. And in doing so, we have failed our daughters. And it's our responsibility. And I'll be the first one to say that I'm I've been pushing, especially the last few years, to elevate my engagement. And I want people who need help to reach out. Uh, it's okay to need help. And on that note, I want to thank uh, Dr. Bridget uh, for taking the time to stop by and on something so important. Uh, I love her balance and her understanding and her maturity. But if you know the background and the family she comes from and just where we came from during that time, you look at how many people who came out with us from from Forest Brook and the level of success. It's unparalleled. Mm -hmm. How many of us are actually doing well? Absolutely. And you know, and it, there's a reason for that. And number one, you go back. The teachers looked like us for the most mm -hmm. part, mm -hmm. and they were there because they loved what they, they cared. Mm -hmm. And we we we've got to understand that we can't expect that from today's teachers. And so we've got to be more involved. So again, I thank you. Hopefully we can get on and talk about some, some more things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, thank you for having me. And I'll have you on my podcast soon. Yeah, it's been a while. It's yeah, been it's a been while. while. You were on my radio show and that was that was amazing. Oh, yeah, that, we did we did that. Uh and it was on human trafficking, sex trafficking. Yeah. Yes. And uh, again, that's something that hopefully we can revisit because again, yes. we're talking about. 70,000 black women and girls missing in this missing. country. Absolutely. And it's almost silent. Mm -hmm. And we, we we need to talk about that. So I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, and you know, we'll we'll cross each other's path because you're gonna be online cutting up. <laughs> Absolutely. So, cutting up. Uh and and I'll have to come in, me and the guys, and get you yeah. get you back in place. But we'll yeah. we, we'll see you. But again, thank you. Um <laughs> And thank everybody thank for dropping in, and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.